Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Lee College Soccer Referees uh, Seminar, first seminar of the summer. Um, we're excited to have Sonia Denicourt here. Uh, I'm not going to even attempt to um, mention all of her uh, accomplishments. I'll let her take care of that for me. Uh, but again, a um, couple of things uh, to just want to mention. Um, Questions will be limited, of course. Uh, we want Sonia to give as much information as possible. I'll be monitoring the questions uh, and see if I can answer them online. Um, but you can always come back tomorrow or later, send me an email, and uh, we'll get we'll take care of that for you. But uh, we want to spend as much time with Sonia and her expertise uh, throughout the evening. So uh, strap yourselves in and um, enjoy it. Sonia, all yours. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Paul. Good evening, everybody. Um, well, first of all, thank you for the invitation. What a pleasure and a privilege for me um, to be here with all of you tonight. Apparently, there's over a couple hundred people on this uh, webinar. So I'm really looking forward to share a um, few tips on a few clips that we've selected that we are hoping that will help you um, in your matches. Um, so just briefly, next slide. Look. Um, maybe some, some of you know me, but just in a nutshell, I've been around for a little bit uh, as a referee. I was lucky enough to do three World Cups and a couple Olympic Games, as well as many CONCACAF championships, some All-Stars game, the first one ever, um, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, a lot of men's professional game as well in Brazil and Salvador and North America, which at the time, if you look at the dates in 1996, there wasn't too many women referees around the world. So it was even tougher then than it is now. So that was nice. After that, next slide. Um, off the field, I'm currently the director of programs and development at Soccer Quebec since April. They got me out of retirement uh, after four or five years of enjoying, enjoying life um, a little bit and having a few contracts here and there. I'm back full time in soccer because that's my love. And looks like I can't live without it. So I'm back full in action and, and, and I love it. I've done a bunch of stuff before that, sport consultant. Um, I'm still doing some um, speaking engagement and instructor assessor once in a while and all this. Next slide. Uh, some of you know that um, some of the key jobs that I had, um, 2014-15, I was a CONCACAF director of refereeing which was the first time ever they had um, a woman leading um, a, a, a position as a director for a confederation, so men and women all together. So, of course, as you all know pretty well, CONCACAF, um, there's a lot of challenges in our area at different levels, so that was quite interesting. Um, in almost 10 years at FIFA as the head of women refereeing, and again, it was the first time ever because before that, there wasn't any women program really, um, and it was only a few people were working in the department. So that was a big change in 2005 as well for the structure of FIFA. And we really professionalized the, the environment by having more fitness instructor, technical instructor, physiotherapists, et cetera, et cetera. So that was a big, uh, uh, a big change in, in, the, in the schedule. Next slide. This webinar, um, Paul and I, Paul's a specialist, but we discussed that this is all about refereeing today, referees and not assistant referee really that much. We want to give you some tools about um, managing the players, managing the game for college soccer specifically. So all the clips um, are about you. Um, so I want to mention something before we start the clips. Also, if you see yourself on the clips and then we um, mentioned that things could have been done differently, this is nothing personal. This is only to help everybody to maybe um, fine tune their game. So please don't take anything negatively or personally in that aspect. Next slide. Um, we're gonna talk about different tools, about body language. I was known to be the good ref, the smiley ref, but also firm when I needed to. So uh, we'll talk about a few uh, tools that you can use. Next. Just go all the way. By failing, to prepare, you are prepared to fail. You've heard that before. Those college soccer games are tough. As you know, they could be some tough players, some national team players. So you can be pre prepared for that level of game. We hope for the best and prepare for, prepare for the worst. And how many times in your matches that you've had some situation that like, oh my God, I didn't expect that. 
And then um, what we have to be prepared for that. And then of course, practice, practice, practice um, will help you to perform. But first you need to have the passion for the game, which this should be a given. I think you all have it. Next. Again, again. Yep. There are no secrets to success. Um, so everybody has their own style of refereeing. Uh, nothing is right, nothing is wrong necessarily. It's just like sometimes a few things works and then a few other things are not working. So you prepare for the game and then, Doug, you work hard, you're learning from failure and from others. And this is a little bit the key of what I was saying about those clips. Um, you're going to see yourself or maybe some colleagues and then uh, we learn from that so we don't repeat the same mistakes. So we learn faster. Um, the best advice I could tell you right now is like you lead by example. You be your own per person as a referee and um, your actions are speaking much louder than words. So we're hoping that like uh, you, you can show this when you are um, in action on the field. Okay. So I would say without wasting any minute of your precious time, I would like um, to go on with the first video. So what we're going to do is basically, I have a bunch of videos to show you. We're going to look through the whole video first, and so you have an idea of what we're talking about. And after that, um, I will give you some pointers towards that. And here and there, I may ask you to use the chat to vote. Um, if it's a yellow card or red card for you, we're not going to overly do it every clips because of what Paul explained in terms of like the time of uh, today and also um, the, 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 the lack a little bit of interaction that we uh, we don't have like if we were in a classroom. So hopefully this is okay for all of you. You ready for the first clip? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, eh? What do you think? I think the referee, yes, we start, yeah, from the beginning. Let's let's go step by step. At the moment, okay, stop, stop. Where we saw the referee, he already started the transition, you know, to go forward. However, if we go a little bit further, yeah, you can go back. At this point, perfect, stop. What I'm really happy about this is like the referee's on the screen at the moment. So the referee did a good transition by sprinting and getting a little bit the angle he needs. If we look exactly at this screen, it's a good stop. Um, if you draw a line between the referee and number seven white, who's um, having the ball at the moment, he should be able to see between those two players for a possible contact. So this is when we're talking about an experienced referee would maybe step a little bit out of his diagonal to go slightly to the right to be able to see between those two players what kind of contact is happening. So go forward a little bit until the hip contact. Stop. Yeah, right there. At the moment of contact. So if we could be a little bit more precise, I would like to have the referee even like to move a little bit to the right, probably, like again, a little bit off his diagonal, but to be able to see exactly the contact between the two players. Um, therefore, the referee um, uh, would have like a 100% confident call. I have to say that in this case, the referee um, was very, very present. He went deeper in the penalty area. If you go a little bit forward, okay, stop. Look how deep he is. He's, he's really deep in the penalty area. I mean, normally we, we would almost say, e, that's a little, almost too deep. But wherever the, play, the players are and the ball is, he's in a good position. And it's amazing because he could sell his decision so well. As you can see, his body language, his signals are absolutely clear. 
And then there was no argument from the players. So key points in here is to be able to sell your call. You got to have proximity and angle to be able to make that decision. And then the referee in this case had it mostly. He was able to give a clear signal, clear signal. And then the players went on and didn't argue at all. So that was like a, a, an easy sell. Um in my opinion, also there was no penalty. It was a good, um, it was a good normal contact, hip, hip check a little bit, uh, but nothing, nothing that deserved a penalty kick. In, in, in my opinion, um, so that that's really good. We don't really see the assistant referee, but like I said, all the focus on all those clips will be really about um, the referee's job and the teamwork and, and managing the players and all this. But um, very, very important. And then I want to start with a clip like this that is a good example to follow. And just to say that whenever you make that decision and the ball's still in play, get out a little bit of the penalty area because you don't want to be stuck in there and have an assist to a goal uh, a few seconds later. So you got to make sure that you sprint in there, you sell your decision, and then you you get back out there so you're not in contact with any players or the ball by accident. I hope this is fair enough. Okay. Um, so if, if this is okay, if the rhythm is okay for you, I would go like next to, um, right away to clip two. Very interesting clip, eh? So let's go back from the beginning. Key point in here. Okay, stop, stop. Exactly at this moment, when you see as a referee in, in your position, in, your, in his current position at the moment, um, the, 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 the black player lost control of the ball. At this moment, if you go just a second further, who's getting the ball? the opponent, and she has time to turn around. So basically, counterattack is highly possible stuff. Stop. Before that, a few seconds before that, the referee needs to anticipate and read the play that this is possibly what's going to happen. So he should have started to run and sprint to get to the next phase of play because obviously this player is turning around, will take advantage and then the referee is still way behind. So key point in here is like the referee should anticipate the play a little bit, see that like the white player, number eight, has time to turn around and the referee should already been taken off and then um, take a different position. And look at the long ball and how far the referee is, so many yards behind. And at this point, the referee is not even on the screen for a long time because he's too far behind. First thing, stop. First possible decision is the goalkeeper with the attacker. Obviously, there's nothing. Plays continue. But if the referee is like 50 yards behind, which we think he's quite far behind right now, it's going to be hard to call something. So plays continue. Second possible is this one right here. The last defender right now, leaning on the ball and touching the ball 
with her hands, basically completely grabbing the ball and then controlling the ball, stop it there, stop. So the referee at this moment should be inside the penalty area in an angle that could judge exactly what happened. This is a crucial decision in the match. Crucial why? Goal, no goal. Uh, penalty, no penalty. Yellow card, red card. This is a very crucial uh, decision, and that's why the referee should be sprinting, anticipate the, 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 the transition that we saw, and be right in the penalty area. Um, now you saw the clip all in once. Before I give my, my opinion, why don't you use the chat to say yellow card and red card? And that's one of the rare clips we're going to do this, but um, I would like to, to hear from most of you that can do it. If you can just uh, write YC and or red card, yellow card, or and see where we're going with this. Very good, very good. Excellent. That that seems to be clear. Okay, um, and then we can we can go on. Perfect. So continue to clip a little bit. So we it's clear. It's clear if we stop there, stop. It's clear that it's a handball. So 100% sure penalty gate. And then it's a handball. And of course, um, last defender, it has to be a red card. But as you saw in the clip, and we're gonna go back to this, the referee gives a yellow card only. Um, and we'll analyze his body language and everything else. So while we're on that screen at this moment, why the referee also needs to be there, not just for the handball, but look at number 14, what she does. Um, and is it really number 14 that gives a little kick or black play on the ground, holding the leg a little bit? But it looks like number 14 is, continue, like giving a little kick. And this is why I'm talking like experienced referees will have to be right there because, okay, you may get, you may get the red card correct. You may get the penalty kick correct, but you may also have to give a yellow card to the white player if you judge that this kick was on 14. Um, I'm not saying that's the case at the moment, but what I'm saying is like you have to prevent there to prevent by being there. And by being there, you will avoid probably some retaliation in this case. Um, it, you know, we could have like avoid a little like uh, extra contact that is unnecessary in our beautiful game. And then by being there and seeing this, you're selling yourself like miserably that like you're in full control. Okay, so let's look at the referee right now, stop. He's walking slowly. He's not even there in a penalty area. So walking slowly, probably thinking, what am I going to give? Yellow card, red card? Looks like there's communication with the assistant referee. Um, I mean, if he had been close, it would have been a pretty uh, um, like straightforward decision without having to consult the assistant referee even. Um, but certainly not smiling can you go back a little bit when we see when we see the referee smiling so yeah right now walk no urgency stop so we see no urgency from the referee and in in this case like this there's a need for urgency he's far from the play so it's hard to sell his decision, and he made a wrong decision. I mean, we don't see if he gave a pit penalty kick, but definitely he missed the red card because he's too far. He cannot sell his decision. And thankfully, the ladies didn't really argue except the last player at the end, but he got away with murder a little bit. This is not what we want. We want intensity in referee. We want referees to be taken seriously. And that smile, for me, is almost like showing a little bit of lack of respect for the ladies, for the game, and then um, not like wanting to make like the, the, the real good decision. And see, one of the white player probably is arguing and questioning why didn't she get a red card? 
So um, again, the referee did not anticipate, you know, so he didn't do the transition by starting to sprint earlier. Um, his body language showed a little like lack of, of intensity and, and interest. And it is a dog so it's a de denying an obvious goal and goal scoring opportunity. So in all those cases, you have to be there. You have to be right inside the penalty area and then deal with this. Um, I, I would say that I, I don't know this referee. I'm, 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 I'm don't know if he's fit or not. The point is, is like, you have to be fit and you have to use your fitness at the right moment. And in this case, um, there was a bit of a lack of um, reacting quickly um, and, and the sense of urgency to make the right call. So it's a little unfortunate, but um, it's a lesson to learn. If you want to have credibility, and I'm telling you this, um, every game you're building yourself. So if you want credibility, you need to be there. You need to be there to sell your call. Not only 90 minutes of the whole game, but game after game after game. And then by doing so, you will increase your credibility as a person, as a referee in the league. And then people will talk about you. The next game you're going to go out there, they're going to say, oh, yeah, this referee's experience. Yep. Yeah, okay, no, no, I'm, I'm confident today. We're going to do well, sir. And then once you have that reputation, you feel good about yourself and you can deliver even uh, better performances. So um, important points, in my opinion, in this case. All right, I hope that you agree with me on, in this case. Um, to debate if we should give a yellow card to the white player, then... Um, of course, we, we could analyze a little bit her kick and all this, but I think the point of the video was more like the transition, the fitness, the proximity, and, and then to make the correct decision. Uh, because before we don't go to the next clip, we referees are analyzing all this. Most of the coaches and the players, they won't say, um, oh, the referee had the wrong signal. No, they, they, they will only talk about decision. Decision, decision, decision. So as a referee, yes, your position is important. Your your technique is important. Your fitness, all of us, we analyze. But um, ultimately, the rest of the world on the on the field and the spectators, they want to have the right decision. And that's what we have to focus on uh, mainly. All right. So clip three. Okay, so here's a clip. <clears throat> you saw it once. And stop. At this moment, the referee called a foul. He's ahead of the play, but his position and his angle doesn't allow him to see where the ball is going. So Actually, I think you all agree with me. He blew the whistle just a second too soon. A second too soon because he didn't take the time to look ahead and, and delay the, 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 the call for one second or two seconds as we um, are capable to do if it's an advantage. So if he had done that just by even like turning his body or turning his head to look where the ball is going, he would have probably saved himself. So... He was close to this fall. You keep going a little bit. And then he blew the whistle before number 11 was like completely alone to receive the ball and it was going on a breakaway. So um, 
this is um, a great, great clip because it, it's a misadvantage. It's an advantage that should have been given. And because the referee didn't wait for a second or two to see the result of the fall, where the ball is going, then the whistle was blown too quickly. And then that, that's what happened. So I would suggest the referee to like, you know, turn around, give yourself a second or two, but keep remembering who tackled whom, because you may have to come back to that player. Agree? So if we continue, now number 11 has the ball. Well, he wouldn't have had the ball. <laughs> um, and go on a breakaway. And that is why the coach is um, a little bit beside himself. Now look, look at the referee's body language. Very firm. Very solid. Walking towards the coach. We don't know all the elements here, what he said and all this. Um, but obviously he's not happy with the advantage. Maybe he said something too much that the referee has to go to the sideline. But look what's happening here. He touched the coach on the shoulder and lingered a little bit too much. So in my opinion, the highest level you're going to get, less and less you should touch players and coaches. Sometimes, of course, if the player is on the ground, of course, I incite any referees to hold your hand and like bring them up. Of course. We have to be fair in this. But by touching a coach that is angry could cause you some problem. In this case, the coach um, kept his cool, but he could have like moved his arm and then um, would have been like a an interaction and it could have been like a little too physical. So just, just be careful. Send your message. Say what you have to say briefly. If it's too long, it's like giving a lecture to the coach. And it's even worse. It aggravates his um, desire to um, um, to say something more. So just be careful of this. Yes, Paul. Sonia, I guess uh, you know is is there a better position this referee could have taken, where maybe you know um, uh, he was maybe too close to the to the player, or didn't have that you know maybe a television or something. So speak speak to that if you can. I don't, you know, again, I'm asking you. You're the pro there. No, 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 no. Absolutely, absolutely. In my opinion as well, he was, um, not only his body is like, um, after the contact took a, a wrong turn, but he's, he's also not in a good position to, to make that call, you know? So um, if you go forward a little bit in the clip, we'll see more, okay? So by the time he turned his head, you know, he's, he's, he's off position. If he had been a little bit further, a little bit more on an angle, he would have had a better angle of vision to see the foul and then where the ball is going. Okay, I cannot point it on the on the computer, but um, I hope you understand what I mean. Like being a little bit further away from the foul uh, in a better angle, and then um, then he would have like probably saved himself. Okay, so continue the clip. Oops. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Uh, can you go back to the clip? I was not quite done with a few points. Okay. So continue, continue. Continue. Okay, stop. Did you see what the referee just did? He, and then you, you're going to think I'm really picky now, but I'm telling you, down down the road, it's going to be um, the, the, the an important point as a referee not to point the one finger at players like you're a bad guy or you're a bad coach. Don't use the one finger. Use a full hand to say no that's it, finish, or whatever you need to pass on as messages. But try not to do this because I'm telling you, it looks silly that I say that maybe right now, but it's going to help you down the road. 
by showing respect to the players and same as not touching the coach, somebody who's angry and, and, and so on. Um, the, um, the, the continue a little bit when he gets to the coach. This is a strong body language. This good as his place, his place. Of course, we're only analyzing what we see. Um, the assistant referee or the fourth official that is there, do not as much as possible. Try to prevent a little bit by not letting the coach hang onto the sideline um, or even like onto the field. So try, 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 try at this level. College soccer, they're clever players. And then try to like be preventative and then come in front to like just already like that's okay, coach. It's, we're taking care of it. And then, like, you know, like calming the coach before the referee would have to come. Um, so, basically, we would hope at this level that the assistant referees and the fourth official will be able to manage the sideline, the technical area, so the referee wouldn't have to come to the sideline. Okay? So, um, try to do this as a teamwork effort as much as you can, and then the referee can concentrate on the players on the field, and then the restart, and then so on and so on, and maybe caution the guy who just tackled, uh, but managing the field of play. The outside should be the fourth official and the assistant referee as much as possible. I hope you agree with me on this. All right, all right, all right. Enough talking about this one. Um... I hope the rhythm is okay for you so far. Um, we'll go to next slide. Okay. Excellent. This is a nice clip, but there's a few things in there. Um, very interesting. So let's go on again. Stop. You saw the contact. Now, foul, no foul. Obviously, it's a tackle from behind. And then we see in the replay that it's a pretty hard tackle from behind. The referee is like, looks like he's leaning a little bit to get an angle to see exactly the contact. So maybe... Um, if he would have moved like a couple steps so he doesn't have any players in between, um, he would have had like a, a good angle. Um, what's really interesting in this clip, say, it's the advantage. So go on a few seconds. Big tackle. The referee wants to whistle. He starts his signal to like, uh-oh, counterattack. Great advantage signal. Very nice. Now he should like sprint, 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 like continue. Yeah. Look how long he's holding the advantage signal. Holding, 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 holding during this time he's sprinting. And then stop. Stop. So he holds the signal of advantage about seven long seconds. And then you know, if we were in a classroom, I would tell you, I would ask you, is seven seconds too long to hold the signal? And doesn't, does it stop you from like actually sprinting faster because it's an awkward position to run with a hand up? Um, I, I think we agree that three or four seconds is plenty enough to give a clear message to everybody that it's a clear advantage and everybody can see it. Um, so um, I think seven, eight second, it might be a little too long. So think about it because if your arm is down, you're going to have a lot more speed and an ability to like um, sprint yourself to get there. But 
so far, I'd say it's a good advantage. And then he sprints to the position. So very, very good. The fitness is there and he's able to catch up a little bit. So continue because now could be another crucial decision. There. And then we're not going to judge this and this could necessarily, it looks like it's a, uh, the ball went to the chest. It could have been a handball. So the referee has to be there. Here in the, the, the college soccer is a fast game. You have like very young, talented players that, that are, are quite fit. So again, I insist that as a referee, you need to be fit and use your fitness to your best ability to be at the right spot. Um, in this case, the referee is, um, is close enough, but I, I could question a little bit his angle of vision in there. So maybe he should be a little wider to be able to see what's happening um, because all of the players are quite concentrated in, in a small area. So give yourself a chance by being slightly wider, not too close to the place of the ball, the ball won't bounce on you, but at the same time, you can really um, um, take, take, take a good decision, you know, make a good decision. Um, continue. And then stop. And then during all this time, number 22 was still on the ground um, and it's time to stop the play. That's all right. You continue. Then again, the clip doesn't show all the detail, but the referee goes to number 22. Uh, and then, are you restarting? Okay, stop, stop. Doug, stop. Okay. So if we see that contact, I'd be curious how many of you would say yellow card after, um, so or not. So the referee gives a good advantage Good advantage because to break away, right to delay, the 22, number 22 seems to be um, quite hurt because the tackle came from behind. He couldn't see it coming and it looks at the um, ankle uh, level. So in my opinion, the referee stopped the play. The ball was in play. The referee stopped. You come back, check on number 22, you know, because you want to make sure that the player is okay. And then you remember who did the tackle up oh, number 13 green. In my opinion also that you should come back to that player and give a yellow card. My opinion, it was a reckless tackle. It was a great decision by the referee to give the advantage, but to have control of the game and to show to all the players that you really master the, the, the understanding of the game you come back to that player, you check on number 22 black to make sure he's okay, and then you go to number 13 green and you give calmly a yellow card for a request tackle. And that would be absolutely perfect. I think nobody could argue with this. You'd be um, a hero. And that's what I'm talking about, the um, understanding, game understanding. At this level and higher, and if you go, want to go higher as well, it's not just to be fit and know the laws of the game. This is, for me, a given. You should know that. You should be fit. You should know the laws of the games, but you should understand the game. And then you will get respect by the players by coming back like a few seconds later very calmly, and then the players will accept that 100%. It will the players will understand that, wow, this referee didn't stop the game for nothing, but yet reacted and came back and gave the yellow card. So um, the referee did quite well, except, in my opinion, of that yellow card, um, unless he gave it, and it's not on the clip, um, that, um, that that's the information that we have. And uh, just to recap a little bit, maybe the seven, eight se seconds of holding the signal, um, could lower to three seconds, it's, it's plenty enough normally. One last time, pretty hard tackle. Okay. 
All right. I think it's pretty um, it's pretty clear um, for this clip. I mean, I wish I could ask you questions, but we're going to keep it for later. <laughs> um, thank you for your understanding of this. All right. Clip number five, if you're ready. This is a bit of a longer clip. Okay, interesting clip, isn't it? There's a few things in here for sure. Let's look at it again. All right, we stop here. I think the referee is a bit too close to the players. He's like pretty much in there. I don't know what he's trying to do by talking to players. Don't, don't stand there, whatever he's saying, but he's missing out on what's happening between number eight, blue, or, or, or black, blue, and then number 21, white. He's missing what's important. So make sure that as a referee, when it could be a mass confrontation like this, and a lot of like pushing and shoving, shoving get yourself a small distance that you can oversee what is happening because the two players up front are not the big problem. Look at number eight and number 21. This is the problem. This is the, they had the chance to push one another be in each other's face a few seconds too many. And the referee didn't see it because obviously he's concerned about the two players up front. So give yourself the proper angle and distance to be able to judge that. And now what's happening is others are retaliating. So you have to separate the two teams as soon as possible. So when this is not working like this, like try to separate the two teams to calm things down as fast as possible. And the referee just went to the blue player and did not try to separate the players already. It should have been done. And now he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know exactly what happened. So here comes the assistant referee. It's a teamwork. That's okay. If the assistant referee needs, um, feel the needs to come on the field, that's all right. But make your movement and your presence valuable. So if you continue a little bit, as assistant referee, you go there. You put your hand there, but like you're you're doing not much right now. You're you're not even separating the blue and the white. Oops. We'll we'll get back to that part. Okay. Too much pushing and shoving. And of course, the players will get in, involved in this. So assistant referee trying to immediately separate so it doesn't go any further in all the pushing and shoving because now two players maybe could have a yellow card, but if you continue and you don't react quickly, it could be two, three, four, five players involved, and then it gets difficult a little bit. And we do not want to give too many yellow cards free, you know what I mean, like for nothing. You have to see who started the fight, who started the pushing, who um, is responsible for this um, reaction between players. So continue just a bit. Right. 
referee wants to give a yellow card, but not too sure. Now he's going to consult the assistant referee. And then you walk back. Don't turn your back. From there, look at the assistant referee turning towards the sideline. Walk backwards so you can see all the players in front of you. Don't turn your back at any moment when there's like pushing and shoving like this. Turn yourself to walk backwards, referee and assistant referee, to discuss if you need to. And now we could question, um, should number eight blue and number 21 white should both get a yellow card? Number Continue, sorry. Continue a little bit. So number eight blue got a yellow card, but why not number 21? They're like push one another quite a lot. Even if number eight started it, number 21 really pushed hard and retaliate. And then who started, we don't really know. One pushing, one the other pushing. Um, so it goes back and forth and back and forth. And that could have been be prevented. Right there, number 21 with the two hands on the shoulder pushing hard, repetitively, is enough to give a yellow card as well. The two players were highly involved. And then I think, you know, if the referee would have been a little bit further, I would he would have been able to see this. Um, again, communication, if the assistant referee helped the referee in those decision, um, like make sure that you advise the referee that's your job that's your job to advise the referees to make sure that whoever needs a yellow card will get them and then if i would have been an assistant referee there i would have told the referee give a yellow card to number eight blue and number 21 white uh because of all the interaction that they had between um between them sonia yes just just, uh, just mentioned you know for for the you know the this is the college game, you know, and I've said this before, is that, uh, you know, we have to referee the game in hand. So here yeah. we are, we have Villanova and Temple, both from the Philadelphia area. <laughs> this, is, this is an overtime, four minutes, so it's a crucial decision. Whatever the referee makes the decision, it's a crucial decision. They don't look each other anyway. So uh, this is, this is you have to referee the game in hand. Um, and, uh, you know, where can, the intensity can actually pick up, as, as everybody knows, on this call. So I just wanted to mention that, Sonia. Yeah, no, totally, totally. See, uh, thank you, Paul, because obviously, um, I mean, you, you, you see all those games and then like the only thing I can judge at the moment is the clip itself. But uh, yeah, the intensity is there. Uh, but what we want from the referee and then the refereeing crew is to manage those players before it gets worse because they're young, hot temper, and then they will they will retaliate. 100% sure they will retaliate. Uh, those young guys in particular won't let any other to push them. So you have to expect that. You have to expect that this is going to happen. So um, be, be on top of it. Be on top of it. And we need those four sets of beautiful eyes on the field to help one another. Um, and especially if you have the communication system, then even the fourth official being far away it could also have a good angle of view and be able to provide some information to the referee if you do have the communication system. Um, and again, importantly, it's um, it's it's tough games and everything counts. So it can't be an easy yellow card. It can't be a weak yellow card. It has to be solid. You have to be able to justify all your decision that you make uh, during those matches. But it's, it's crucial because uh, it, it influence. It could influence. Um, is this a second yellow card for this player? Is it like uh, he's going to miss the next match, and so on and so on? So yeah, totally, um, totally agree with Paul in this uh, part of matters. But just with the clip itself, um, I think both players uh, deserve the yellow cards, um, and then I could have been prevented slightly by. Uh, being a little bit more proactive by separating the players. And after that, you deal, you register numbers, um, and then you, you can react. Um, I have, I, I don't know if we're going to get to that clip, but I, I mentioned something here that, um, of course, you don't want to put yourself in danger by being between players that are starting to hit one another. 
But if he can be there before they start to push and shove in an, or in between in a safe way, um, this, is, this is a great preventative measure to avoid any further um, or worse decision. You don't want to get to the red card. You want to prevent that. So if you feel that you're safe doing so, get in there, get involved and, and protect yourself 100%. But like if you can do this, um, yeah, you'll be a hero. Okay, okay. Next clip. So, foul, no foul, advantage, that result into a goal. Okay, stop it there. Stop. All right. There's a whole thing, looks like, from the blue to the white. And the referee is showing by the movement of his arm that, like, yeah, there's some holding or, like, um, uh, like pushing on shoulder, but then immediately after he sees like there's an opening. White player gets away. He gains advantage and then stop, stop. So now the referee already acknowledged that there's a foul. He gives advantage, but he shouldn't be there. He should have already taken off. And that's like anticipating now there's an opening in front of the player. Um, and if he turn, if he was a little bit wider, like towards um, us, if, if you want, um, he would have seen that there's like a, a wide player open, and it, it's it's a great advantage, not just for that immediate play, but also for the future. And maybe he did see this. Um, so great advantage at the moment, great signal, but he stands still. And then look at this: few seconds pass, he hasn't started to run yet. A good experienced referee will see that, okay, next phase of play, this is another big decision to make. So he should have started to immediately run to get into the next position because a breakaway, I mean, it's dangerous. Now what's going to happen next time? So he's almost midfield, and look what's happening next. Ball is sent. Now we're not talking about offside or not. We're not we don't have the angle in any way. Now he's still and then if he was on side, it's a beautiful goal and a great, great advantage. The only thing I would say is like um, on, 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 that, on that time, like just take off, anticipate. It was a late start. And maybe, again, like some of the other clip, giving advantage – should not stop you from running. And if the advantage learned the signal, like stop him from starting to run, we'll give it a quick one, but you got to be able to like start moving and anticipate where the ball is going a little quicker, a little quicker than that, um, in my opinion. And then once you get to the player inside the penalty area, we should have the referee already sprinting from A to B direct sprint like forget about the angle in this case you want to get close to the action inside the penalty area or close enough as 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 fast as possible so that's a direct sprint from a to b um in case of possibly the uh, the, the goalkeeper um have a contact with the attacker or so on or so on or so on so um again we're not talking about the offside because this Webinar is really about the refereeing, the transition, reading the play, and being able to react quickly more than um, offside or, um, the, or, or or any decision with the assistant referee. But try to be, the, you know, like the expression, try to be on the screen. Try to be on the screen all the times. It means that you're 
close enough to the play, not too close to be in the middle of the players, but like, see there, he should be like sprinting, sprinting. And by anticipating, he would have probably been there already. And then it, this result in a, in a beautiful goal. Fair enough. Okay. Um, it's almost eight o'clock, but we definitely have time for um for um if you, if you're okay with that, like another maybe couple clips. Um, all right, clip number clip number seven. Okay, interesting clip, eh? So let's look at it again. Look at the contact first. Let's, let's look at the contact. Stop. Okay, first of all, we'll talk about the contact in one second, but look, look at the referee's position. Um, he, He's not in a bad position. There's a contact. It's early in the game, apparently. And then so he could be slightly closer because now it's important. He knows the intensity. So he could be a little closer. It's always better to be slightly closer than too far and not bending. You know, once you, um, once you, you, you bend too much, like half your body down, it's, which is not the case now, but like, looks like you're trying to see between the legs of the players or you're trying to see in between the players. It means that you possibly are too far or not having the right angle and you have to do that kind of movement as opposed to if you're straight up and you're closer your body language talks like firmly that you're in full control and there's there'll be no hesitation in your decision um what's interesting in this clip is um the the white player the white player Okay, forget about this push. We'll talk about it in a second. I want you to look at like when he goes with the ball and have contact with the blue player, he turned his body, you know, to the right side to rotate and maybe create the contact. Look at this again. Look the way he's turning. So have, have, have a good analysis. Number one, does he, does he stop? First of all, does he have control of the ball? Or is the ball like in between? And why is he turning his body like this? Is maybe because he doesn't have full of control and he wants to create the contact with the defender to have a free kick. So at this level, the players are clever and you are too. And you have to be out there close enough to understand what the player is trying to do. Is he trying to create a contact and does he have a chance to play the ball by turning his body like this? He had maybe lost control already. And now he's trying to like, ah, I'm going to try to get a free kick out of it anyway. And that's maybe, that's why he does that. So you have to think about it. And then it continue, but continue the clip a little bit. But now number Y is upset and look what he does. He's pushing the blue player, two hands in the back. And who's going to get the yellow card? The defender. The blue defender is getting the card. And I'm not even going to go um, in detail. Was this a fall? Was not a fall? I want you to think of like, did he create that contact because he didn't have full control of the ball and he wanted a free kick or there was actually a contact and then the blue deserved the yellow card. 
This is hard to judge just by seeing this. But this is the questioning that you have to think when you make a decision like this. What's good? And, and then I like really this referee. Now you start to sprint, but he's a little too late in this. I would have liked to see like a couple steps ahead, but he's in there. He's separating the player. He's preventing any more retaliation and then immediately gives a yellow card to the blue. So, so that's good also. His technique of giving a little card was clear. The player was identified, isolated in a way enough to know um, clearly. Now, let's say that it was really a foul and he deserved the yellow card. How about the white player that actually pushed him? A good referee with a good understanding would also go have a little talk to the white player. That push doesn't deserve a yellow card or not, but it certainly deserves a talk. Because if you see that yellow card, that yellow player, sorry, that white player pushing, and you go talk to him, and everybody's seeing that you saw this, and you will not tolerate this during the match, you're sending, sending a clear message to everybody that you are fully aware of your surrounding and this game is going to be under control and you will not tolerate that pushing and shoving as retaliation. Um, and, you know, and then you can judge if it deserves a yellow card or not, but by being there, by being um, proactive in this, you, you will save yourself um a lot of aggravation for the rest of the match, that's for sure. Sonia. Yes. This is really, really, really good stuff. I'm getting a lot of comments, uh, you know, oh, from uh, the referees there. If, you know, in, in wrapping this up, you know, what is the overall advice that we can give to our, our, our crew here? Yes. Um, well, thank you, Paul. Um I hope that you can remember a few points of today's conversation. And, and if you want to write it in the chat, I'll, I'll send you some right now. Um, if you want to up your game, if you want to up your game to be the best referee in that college soccer game or even like further up, you need to have a good understanding of, of the game. And then now I'm, I'm talking about um, not just, like I said earlier, not just your fitness and, and laws of the games. I believe that more you know about the tactical play, about the games, about the players and the teams that you're going to referee, more information you have, better decision you'll be able to make and better preparation you will have. Think about presence on the field, the proximity of play, and your personality. Use it. Use it to sell. Some people like to talk. Some others use to prefer the body language. But use your personality to the best tool that you have. Um, less words sometimes is better than too many. That's I've learned that my career. I um I didn't have to talk much. My body language was saying enough, and in a few words was good enough. And then if they need an explanation on the laws of the games, I said I'll be happy to talk to you after the match, but not during the match. You don't want to delay. You want to get going and then get the ball go going. And this way, you gain respect by the players, and it will follow you. Uh, professional approach: get ready, prepare yourself. Expect the um, unexpected in a game like this. You never know what's going to happen. And then you can't trust uh, players and coaches and all this. You, you, you have to be in full control of your environment as, as much as possible. Um, I do believe that in college soccer, retaliation is a bit of a problem. And then Paul probably would um, know, know a lot more about this. But uh, retaliation, if you cut this out, you will um, have a, a better um, management. Um, in the game. So good communication, good teamwork, good body language, and uh, hopefully you 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 have learned a few things uh, during those clips. And it was really a pleasure for me to be here. Thank you, Paul, for the invitation. Thank you, Sonia. And I'll tell you, you know, again, you know, the chats have been, you know, you know, just, just keep coming in. It's just awesome. Very great presentation. Your oh. expertise is, is uh, spot on. And uh, I mean, the reinforcement uh, of what the uh, you know, uh, what we've been seeing and what we've been, you know, uh, you know, given to the referees, it, this only solidifies some from someone from your experience and expertise. So, Sonia, we really do appreciate it. And uh, I want to thank everybody online, um, you know, who, who attended tonight. Uh, you, have, you have any questions, uh, you know, uh, after the chat, send them to me. 
Uh, and if I don't know him, which is probably likely, I'll ask Sonia to, or ask Sonia to uh, yeah, obviously chime in. But thank you for everything tonight. Sonia, again, thank you very much. This has been terrific. And I want to thank Doug and Lana from Never Ends for putting this on. And um, again, next um, next webinar, uh, you know, don't quote me on this. I think it's July 18th, but uh, okay, check their website. All right, good night, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Have a great season. Thank you.